three two one and we are live here on this friday morning at 9 a.m rob duster john fanta terrence oglesby this is the dtf podcast this is the first live version of the dtf podcast we've done in fanta in years probably this was this okay. is a little bit of a throwback back when deshaun butler was the old to and uh you know this is a little little throwback to our days we don't have trevor producing we don't have dagan producing we have me producing through our streaming service so we'll see how this thing goes man we're Tio, screwed Tio, how you feeling man i look you had you had a long trip back you were uh it wasn't technically west coast but you were out west calling mountain west games long day of travel you are officially our mountain west correspondent now so how you feeling man you good over there yeah i'm good it took a it took a while to get back so i'm on the runway yesterday actually was talking to fanta about this uh yesterday morning but like they popped a tire on the way out to the runway so we could take off and so we ended up being delayed it was supposed to be a 6 a.m takeoff we take off at nine i missed my connection they missed the next connection it takes two connections to get to reno where i'm living so a uh, long day made it home a little tired ready to go that's how that is <laughs> fana how you feeling over there man I, you know what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna give you you have you have 90 seconds mm. i want you to set the scene for where we're gonna be tomorrow what's going to happen tomorrow and then we can kind of move on from it because we're going to have plenty to say about uh this uh this weekend trip coming up so go ahead tell the That's people right, what because I, I, I will have a quick word in, in a few moments on camels okay i'll, I'll <laughs> tell you about that in a second campbell camels we'll get to that in a moment college basketball fans and followers come one come all because tomorrow there are a number of intriguing matchups and ranked teams in action but the event of the day features two unranked teams one of which has been a basement dweller this season the other a team that is on the bubble but coming off of a nice road win but the point it's not necessarily about the x's and o's and the players on the floor it is about an unprecedented event in a conference rich in history and camaraderie. And it comes in the founding city that the conference was born in, in 1979. Ed Cooley returns to Providence as Georgetown's head coach. The thought of us ever saying that, if I had told you three years ago, five years ago, one year ago, that that was going to happen, you would have done a double take, if not a triple take, even when the rumor mill was flaring up as last season went on. It is reality. It is happening in Providence. Mm -hmm. It is unlike anything that we have ever seen in the 45-year history of the Big East Conference. Providence fans feel betrayed. They feel anger. They feel frustration. They had an amazing run that they experienced with Ed Cooley, but that's not on their minds because the anger has been born out of all the success, all the buy-in, the community, the NCAA tournament births, those runs, the run to the Sweet 16. But tomorrow it all comes to a head. The wound is fresh and my biggest plea tomorrow to anybody attending that ball game is that you let the 10 players on the floor decide it and that we have a, a, a safe scene. But there's no question that that is going to be the most impactful, the most emotionally sounding atmosphere that we see in college basketball this season. Mm -hmm. Well said. Um and I said this on Twitter, and I've said it to Providence fans uh, privately that I know that are going to be there. But I just hope that this does. There's a line. You don't want to cross that line. You don't want to let it get physical. You don't want to let things get thrown. You want to make sure that the game goes to completion. I know you're upset. Voice your opinion. Let it be known. Say every single thing that you got to say. Get it all out. Right? Get it all out. Let that frustration out, but then move on. Enjoy the coach you have. And uh, hopefully – that we see somebody from that's not just Devin Carter, right? Somebody from Providence can uh, help back up 
that point and, and reiterate that. All right, uh, TL, we, we got a, a show here that is going to end up being nine burning questions. It was supposed to be eight, then Arizona went and lost. Um, but I got to start you off with something because I was asked about this last night. It came from a young man who goes by the name Hurley Mania, and he <laughs> wants to know that if the Mountain West the young man. double the bids that the ACC does this season, will you double your donation to charity this year? No, I won't double my donation to charity. I forgot about this charity. Charity. You made this hey, I'm, 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 right? I won't double my donation to charity, but I, I am donating to charity, it looks like, more and more. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, I, I, I won't double, but I will donate whatever. I can't remember what it was for. It was for a seat. I think it was more bids to the tournament or something like that. There was some it was more involved. bids to the tournament, Big yeah. East or the ACC. I, I, I somewhat knew this was going to happen, but at the same time, like, it's for charity, so why not? Hey, uh, about Wayne Tinkle, though. Wayne Tinkle lost five in a row, getting one at home. Oregon State's not great, but Arizona, I, hey, guys, it's hard to win on the road. Whatever league, whatever team, and when you're the oh, Super Bowl. No, no, no. Oh, no. Matt Bowl. McCall. Who, who oh, did Matt McCall just Super hack Bowl. Huh? Have you been talking to McCall too much? Parents. Winning no. is hard. <laughs> no, you can't You can't win. You, you can't lose at Oregon State. Oregon State's not very good. Shout out to our buddy Matt, but, like, they're just not very good. Can't lose that game. Yeah. So, all right. So let's let's get into that. that that's the first thing that we got to start off with here. Is, we got a Beaver um, fan in the chat. Yeah, we got a Beaver fan, man. He's fired up. Um, Moses, good morning to you. So the the big question that I have is, uh, we've we've now lost two out of four. They had to come back from seventeen down to beat UCLA at home. They are five and three in the uh, in the Pac twelve, and they've overall in their last eleven games. Since beating Wisconsin by 25 at home, they are six and five. Fana, do you still trust this Arizona team? No, not at all. I'm out on them. I'm out on this Arizona team. But frankly, heading into the year, we had some questions with this team. They were they were performing beyond their skis, right? Mm -hmm. Early in the year. That happens in college basketball sometimes. It does. Like teams sometimes fool us for better or for worse. And they went to Cameron Indoor, and nobody could take that away from them. But is Duke as good as we thought? The answer to that question is no. They're not as good as we thought they were going to be. We thought they would be a top five team in the country. Could they get there? They're not there right now. They have not, they they can't win on the road themselves. And so for me, I'm out on Arizona because I don't think Kylan Boswell, first off, Kylan Boswell's in a, a on a major struggle bus, but I don't think that 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 he and Caleb Love are going to be able to coexist and make this work. So Tommy Lloyd's never lost to this degree at Arizona. I think there's a reason for it. And I think, you know, when you think about it, they lost to Zulis to Bellis, right? They lost, and he's not the only one, they lost some key pieces from last year's team. And heading into this year, they did have some, some tinkering to do. It worked early, but they're just not getting enough. Uh, I think they got to do more through Larson. I don't think that they do enough for, through him. Throughout Larson's the not going to do anything. He's just not that personality of a kid. Like y you can set him up, set him up. He would much rather just make the extra pass and move mm -hmm. the ball. Unless he's wide open, he's not. He's not. Taking but I'm out on him. I'm out. I'm out on him. They're a good team, as Andrew Cooper just said. They're a good team. They're not great. They can make the second weekend of the tournament, maybe. Uh, but they're they're. I'm out on them in the final four tiers. No way. They're not. Here, here's here's what I'll say. I, and and Tio, I'm I'm curious your take on this because. I think that they are built to be able to make a run, but you're not going to be able to make a run if your point guard is doing things like giving you zero points, two rebounds, two assists on the road. If you go to Washington State and you get zero points, zero rebounds, and zero assists out of your starting point guard. Kylan Boswell in losses for Arizona this season is averaging 4.6 points, 2.6 assists, 1.2 boards, and shooting 20% from the floor and 13% from three. In wins, he's averaging 11 points, shooting 47% from the floor and 47% from three with almost five assists per game in victories. How do you, how do you fix that? You just tell them to be more aggressive, but guys, you got to shoot the ball better. They went three of 14 from three on the road. That's tough. And then on top of that, Oregon State knocks out 12 of 20. That's your big thing. One team hit shots. The other team didn't hit shots. And they just, 
I don't know why it's not working. I mean, you look at all the, these guys on this roster, it's it's hard to figure out. But Kylan Boswell, he's not this super fast guy. He's not the lightning rod that Kirk Creasa was last year. Um, he's more good of a and bad. Heel guy. Huh? For good and bad. <laughs> for good and bad. But right now, for good. Because Kirk Creasa is going to find a way to get going. Uh, mm-hmm. Kylan Boswell, obviously, in their losses, hasn't. Yeah. I, I'm. Are you, T.O., do you still think they can make a run? Yeah, I do. They're still big. They're still physical. They still have shot making. And when you're on a neutral court, it's different than having to go up and play at Oregon State. And I know that everybody's like, oh, they suck. Yeah, Oregon State's not very good. You, it's still their Super Bowl. And it's still hard to play at those places. You could be last in the conference and end up taking down the top seed because they're sleepwalking. Those things happen. And you're not, it's going to be the NCAA tournament. It's going to be a little bit different there. I still think that they can make a second weekend. Yeah, I'm, I, I still think that they can make the Final Four, man. I, I'm, I'm still in on their ability. We know what this team's ceiling can be, um, and we know why they are struggling, and it is because Kylan Boswell is kind of in his head. So figure that part out, get him going again, and I think that you'll be able to get Arizona going again. So uh, I'm still in on them, but they're very clearly uh, in a spot right now where they are struggling. All right, burning question number two. Terrence, I'm going to you first on this one. Do you trust Kentucky enough defensively to be able to win four straight games in the NCAA tournament, I, I I don't I don't see why I shouldn't. Now their metrics are going to be skewed. They're not, they're ninety six on Kim Palm, but at the same time, uh, South Carolina is good and they're old. That, that's 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 a, exactly yeah. They're they're good and they're old. Their guards are old. They handle pressure, and they were in Columbia. And in Columbia, they show up for like a game every other season with a packed house because they don't really care about basketball. That's that's why Frank Martin had a hard time there. But Lamont has grabbed the right guys. He's understood he could get old, and they were a tough matchup for Kentucky, especially at home. Lamont can coach. SEC Coach of the Year. Lamont can coach. Mm -hmm. Uh, For Kentucky, though, I I think their metrics are skewed a little bit, quite frankly, guys, because they didn't have those seven-footers. There's still going to be an adjustment process. By March, they're going to be fine. I'm telling you they're going to be fine. And they're going to be able to score 90-something points a game. Ran into a buzzsaw, uh, last two losses at Texas A&M, tough physical bunch. They still scored 92 at South Carolina, who you know managed the tempo very well against Kentucky. They're going to have to defend in the half court. I, I love Kentucky still. And, and with those seven footers behind that pressure defense, I think they're going to be fine. Yes. Yeah, Fanna, where do you stand? In a good place. Uh, I'm not reacting to a loss in South Carolina. I, I thought they were going to lose that game. It's just – it. that is a, yes, it's really difficult to win on the road. And in the SEC, it's it's tough. Here's the thing. This is my one worry. Um, they're going to show up to the NCAA tournament, right? And they'll have the spotlight on them. And, and these kids, I think, can, can thrive in it. I genuinely think, however things shake out in the tournament, the halftime score of their first round game is going to be like the halftime score of UConn Iona in the NCAA tournament this past year. If you remember, what was it? A one possession game. Mm-hmm. And what are you thinking? Again? Again, Connecticut's in this situation? No, come on. This team could win it all. And then they broke out. And then they never, they never looked back. The first one could be the toughest one for this team to get. Not in terms of competition, in terms of mentality. They've got to get that first one and get they're a momentum-based team, T.O. Like you just said, I think they're a nightmare to play. Not when not when they're getting ready for the Thursday game or the Friday game of the tournament. It's the second game. If you have to play them in the second round, like th- those dudes just run. They run on nightmare fuel. And they're in trans in transition. You're right. They could just outscore you. And what do we say in the tournament? Your defense only travels so far. So they don't have to be elite defensively with how great they are offensively. They just have to be satisfactory on the defensive end of the floor. Do I buy their final four potential? I'm not going to sell it. This team's too talented. Late game execution. It sounds very simple, but it's complicated with Cal. Late game execution is going to be the key as to whether or not this team makes a Sweet 16, gets to an Elite Eight, and gets to a Final Four. Who has the ball in their hands, and how are those situations being managed? Or they can just overwhelm everybody with their pace. Yeah, the the one thing that I will say is that I do 
Um, I do think you're right. The metrics are skewed a little bit, T.O., but between not having the seven footers at the start and uh, having a couple games that were blowouts where they gave up big runs at the end. And um, the UNC Wilmington loss is something where uh, not having Bradshaw or Onyeso or uh, or Big Z available, like that was the, all all Wilmington did was just kind of attack Trey Mitchell and ball screens there. And uh, Trey Mitchell's good at a lot of things. Ball screen defense is not really one of them. Um, I just I worry about having that one game where they don't show up and they run into a team like South Carolina, right? Like I think the ceiling is there. I think that that Kentucky's a little bit less matchup proof than some of these other teams in the country. If that makes sense. Go ahead, John. This is from Brandon Ramsey. He posted this this morning, B. Ramsey KSR over at Kentucky Sports Radio. Brandon tweeted, AP top 10 teams are now 17 and 27 this season on the road against unranked opponents. Mm-hmm. 17 and 27. You can't you can't go on making this point when I said it's hard to win on a road in conference and both of you almost shit on the live stream when I'm talking about Arizona, Oregon State. We're live here, okay? You know, just okay. to remind you. Cuss away, yeah. man. Cuss away. Winning is hard. Winning we, is hard. Uh, we, shout out to we, Matt McCall for that. Winning is hard. Um, that's good not know Beavers. Yeah. We're okay right. here. Come on. To, to reiterate that point, Fanta, just to kind of drive that home. Um, UConn lost by 15 at Seton Hall. Arizona lost by 18 at Washington State. Uh, Purdue lost by 16 at Nebraska. Kentucky, obviously, that 17-point loss at South Carolina. And to put this into context, in 2023, UConn had a 12-point loss. In 2022, Kansas lost by 18. In 2021, Baylor had a 13-point loss. In 2019, Virginia lost by 10. Villanova in 2018 is the only team in the last decade to win a national title that did not have a double-figure loss on their resume. In 2016, Villanova lost by 23. In 2014, UConn had a 33-point loss that came in late February. Sometimes these things happen. Yeah. Do you remember who Villanova lost to? In yeah, 16? they lost to Oklahoma in uh, Pearl Harbor. In Pearl Harbor, and then they turn around and they beat them by 44 in the final four. Look at that. That's the biggest difference of the biggest game of all unbelievable. time. Unbelievable. All right, I'm switching up the schedule just a little bit here. Going number two since we were right in this point, and, and T.O. had a little bit of shade to throw at his uh, South Carolina Gamecocks rivals. Um, is South Carolina actually the best basketball team in South Carolina? On uh, this day, January 26th at 940 in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the only legitimate time zone. T.O., is it uncomfortable saying nice things about South Carolina? No, I don't care. I don't care at all. I did my work against South Carolina. I'm not worried. I'm not worried at all. Uh, no, hey, th- they're very good. They're, they're very old. And Lamont has done a terrific job with this bunch. Uh, they're one of the slowest teams in college basketball. That's why they beat Kentucky. Let's be clear. That's why they beat Kentucky. They were able to control tempo. And look, they, they've had some big wins this year. Uh, but if you look at their their schedule, Kentucky's their biggest win far and away. Mississippi State's second. After that, it's a whole bunch of nothing. And I'm not telling talking tales out of school. Like that's those are the facts. Like Georgia loss at home. Georgia's okay. Uh Alabama loss on the road, you got thumped by 27. And then Clemson on the road, you lost by five. Like, those are the teams that you've lost to, and it is what it is. So they, they've, they've had one major win in Kentucky, one pretty good win against Mississippi State. The rest of, rest of the teams are, was it 59, 60, and Kim Palm and below? They just haven't done it against quality opponents outside of this huge Kentucky win, which, hey, guys, it was their Super Bowl. And they're old. Lamont does a great job, and they're slow. Mm-hmm. And they got really good guards. Like, look, Talon Cooper and, and good player. Johnson, Talon's a good yeah, player. They're both, like, good players that have been around, that have seen a lot, that are veterans. And when you put them in a, uh, an environment like that at home in Columbia that's rocking and uh, you have a guy just, frankly, look, I think Cal's gonna de- done a great job this year. He got his ass out coached on, uh, on Tuesday night. So, Yeah, yeah. but did they go back? do they go back to Kentucky this year? No, they don't. No. That would have been a thumping at Rupp. Just because everything was behind them, they controlled tempo. Uh, they're not the best team in South Carolina. The, but it's close. It's close. It's close. We're going to see this weekend, like, you know, it's kind of a similar situation. Clemson-Duke on Saturday, that's going to be – that that'll that be a big game. game for both of those programs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fan, you got anything to add on South Carolina? 
Well, they won this game by 17, and B.J. Mack shot 3 of 12 from the floor. Mm -hmm. So not only are they old, they've got different options. I mean, they got a junior in Jacoby Wright. He hasn't had a ton of big games, but he mm -hmm. stayed the course with the program, stayed with Lamont, could, could have transferred, did not. And I was happy for him. You know, when, when a coaching change gets made, it's very easy for a player to I, – I, I don't blame a player for leaving. I mean, go ahead. You, you're playing for the coach. Wright didn't. He stayed. And guess what? He had 14 points against the number six team in the country. He broke the game open with his four triples. So, for me, you, you're you're right. Between Johnson and Cooper – I mean, Cooper, Cooper's been around for five years in college hoops. Right? And he's on stop number three, Moorhead State to Minnesota, now to South Carolina. So he's seen a lot of stuff. And you can sense it in the way that he plays it. Lamont got a tough rap last year, right? And we all know we all know why with, with GG and, and that whole uh, situation. But but this this is him proven that that had to just stew during the offseason of like, you know what, guys? Like I know we were last year. He came ready for this season, T.O. and Rob. He and and his team is sixteen and three. South Carolina basketball is sixteen and three. Yeah, I don't care who you've been Great playing. Great job. It should be you know what? You know what? Super Bowl. Okay, Terrence. I I I respect your take. I think it's fair. It was their Super Bowl, but there's a lot of teams they they get to their Super Bowl and they tinkle. You've got to perform when you get into your Super Bowl. Okay? You can't. Yep, they, they piss right down their leg. They piss yeah, right down their leg. You get nervous. Tinkle, you gotta, tinkle, 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 tinkled all over Arizona. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Um, all right. Listen, we're going to talk about Houston in one second, but I do have some big news. I'm thrilled to announce that we have partnered with Autograph, a company founded by the GOAT himself, Tom Brady, the Autograph Fandom app gives you access to the best college hoops content, fan contests, and exclusive rewards like discounted tickets, all for doing things that diehard fans already do, following your favorite teams in the news and listening to podcasts just like this one. When Tom, and yes, I'm calling him Tom, we're on a first name basis now. Have you talked uh, to Tom? Uh, yes. Yeah, we talked to him. Bullshit. We text every day. Um, <laughs> when, what I love about this is we when just, he, hold on, oh, no, we're on the first day. But so when he co founded Autograph, he had one mission in mind change the fan experience for the better. It works like this you get all the college hoop content you want in one place articles from your favorite writers, pod from your favorite hosts, like Terrence Oglesby and John Fanta, and content from your favorite creators. The more content you consume, the higher you rank as you continue to level up in status on the app. You can unlock unique rewards curated exclusively for you. So download the free autograph app in the app store. Use the referral code F68, that's F68, or tap in at the link in the description below to start earning points for doing something as normal as listening to this very podcast. It really is that simple. John, go ahead. Say what you got to say. Okay, Get it I'm out. sorry, but Get we it just Let it go. You know, it's just amazing that we got done talking about bodily functions and you get into a sponsorship read with we've partnered with. I'm sure the partner is just so proud, you know, <laughs> to, to be our partner as we are literally. By the way, we can't this show can't be live because the the, the chat just has me on the floor. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got some Rudy. Great comment. I'm not going to say it out loud. Peter Jocks Jockstrap. Thank you for saying uh, that you enjoyed the bowling. I appreciate you. Yes. Um, all Players right. Players well, don't wear jock straps anymore. No, they don't. No, yep, they don't. Right. And let, hey, and and you know what? You know who definitely does not wear a jock strap? Tyler Cole. Yeah. Uh, that was that was information that was given to us by Cam Jones, which is always fun to hear. All right. Here's question number three. Do you guys trust Houston offensively enough to be able to win? When inevitably, great offense is going to catch up and beat great defense. Fan, why don't you take that one first? Yeah. Oh, no. No, not to. So when we're talking about this, not to win a first or second or, or Sweet 16 game. Like, I do think that they can get back there. But I just, that's my issue with them in the national title conversation. You know, they, they'd probably be in my tier B right now by default. But I just, guys, like, I love LJ Cryer uh, and, and love Jamal Shedd. I think Shedd, I talked with Shedd earlier this week. He is an awesome kid. 
if you've ever spoken with him, what a what an awesome kid. A guy that that totally understood what his offseason entailed with taking the torch from Marcus Sasser and being a tone setter. But guys, I just don't know if they have enough complementary pieces. When if one of those two guys is off, how is this team getting it done? Answer that question for me, Terrence. How does what team get done if one of those guys is off? If Cryer or Shed are off for Houston, I just don't think that they have enough from their supporting cast to to win six games in March. Uh, they hold the other team to seven of forty four shooting. <laughs> that's that's how they do that. Like it's it's almost become a common theme. You get you get Houston in your bracket, you're in trouble. Like they they will shut everything you do down. They're going to be the toughest, most physical team, not named UConn in the tournament last year. They're going to be one of the toughest, most physical teams in the country this year. And I think all those questions, John, of you know, they're they're coming from a league where they weren't tested. That's no longer the case. They no, a, no, that's not fair. Yeah. They had a they had a two game warm up and then they're right back they're they're right back on track. Like Houston's gonna be fine. In 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 Kelvin Sampson, we trust. Like they're gonna be, they're gonna they're gonna beat the brakes off of Kansas State. They're gonna play Texas at Texas. They're gonna win there, and they're just gonna keep rolling. I think the big one is gonna be Kansas February third. That's the one I'm looking forward to more than anything because that'll be two teams what six and two in league, or, or I don't know what Kansas is in league, but Kansas the, that's the game to watch out for because Kansas at home is a bear. Uh, if they're able to go there and win, I have no reservations. Yeah, you know what? Emmanuel Sharp's got to get going again. Uh, he's a guy who's averaging over 12 per game on the season. But as of late, he's been quiet. Four straight single-digit performances. He's kind of their swing guy. Like, yeah. he'll, go, he'll go off for 20 on one night and then have two the next. So, like, Rob, it's harsh, right? Because I'm saying to you the answer the answer is no. And I really hope I'm proven wrong because I, I actually think Houston winning it all would be a great, would be a really fun story. And Kelvin's had a long road to here and they trusted in their process. Mm -hmm. but do I trust them enough offensively? No, here's the thing. I don't see how much has changed from last year when we thought they could be a national title contender. And when did they bow out, Rob? Sweet 16. Yeah. I mean, the, the counter would be, if you look at the last four NCAA tournaments with basically the same kind of Houston team, they made the Sweet 16, the Final Four, the Elite Eight, and the Sweet 16. I think that they are uh, kind of upset proof, if that makes sense, because I don't think that there are mid-major teams that are going to be able to deal with their physicality. But when I look at the way that they match up with someone like a Purdue or someone like a UConn or some of the, uh, these teams that like are in that same elite tier as them, I get a little bit worried about that. But at the end of the day, like, I think that they're a second weekend team. And if you make it to the second weekend, that you probably can make it to a final four if you get the right draw and then you make the right shot. So um I'm I am worried about it, right? But I, I, I yeah. think that yeah. I think that they're capable of doing it, but I they wouldn't be one of the favorites for me, is probably the way that I'll phrase it. All right. I, I kind of want to flip this thing around um the other direction. Okay. So North Carolina has climbed into the like the consensus as a top three kind of a team in America, right? In large part, because right now they rank as one of the top five defenses in America. T.O., are you buying this whole, like, North Carolina is now an elite defense narrative? Are you are you in on this? Because I see the numbers, and then I look at a backcourt that has two guards that are six foot. You know what? Uh, I, I was shocked that I'm thinking that, yeah, they are, because Elliot Cadeau and R.J. Davis both want to defend. And if you guys, if you have guys that want to defend and they're really good at one thing, and for those two little guards, it's getting up underneath you and keeping you off balance. And then you have guys behind those two that are very willing to communicate and be a part of that. Like I, I, I'm a believer in North Carolina's defense, just because they battled through ball screens as well as I've I've seen when they played Wake Forest and they beat the brakes off of Wake. So it's like the. the Baycott's tough. He's physical. He's not like this guy who's going to crawl the backboards and block shots. He meets you earlier on help to where you're not just going to have to finish over him. You're going to have to finish through him because he's going to meet mm -hmm. you with his body. And then Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan, like while they're like Cormac Ryan's a fine defender. He's got good length. He's not the fastest guy laterally, but he 
he talks, he's aware, he knows where he's going to be at, he knows, understands the scout. Like I, I'm a buyer, maybe not as a number four defensive in, uh, defense in the country from an efficiency perspective, but I'm a buyer in that they can give you problems because they can really guard the basketball. And nobody posts up anymore. So like the size thing, I'm not necessarily all that worried about. I'm more worried with size on the offensive end of the floor typically than defense in college because nobody posts up. Mm -hmm. Like you can you can find ways to you know mask your deficiencies defensively if you're small in college because you can get up underneath the ball and create, cause turnovers in the NBA you can forget it like you're just not going to that's that's the big thing there I just offensively I'm not worried about him defensively I'm less worried about him than people think just because of that size but I I, I think I, I'm not worried I think they're very good defensively I think they can make it to the final four I trust North Carolina more than I trust Purdue. To make the so that's so, so that's three teams this 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 podcast that I've picked the final four team. <laughs> so, so you're, you're so only, you only have one left. Yeah, you have one left, and it's contractually obligated that it comes from the Mountain West. So mm -hmm. you got to come up with a team there that 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 fits the bill. Right? Oh, we we talked about this on the Mountain West Insider last week, right? Yeah, Tio Tio thinks there's yeah, like four teams that can make a second weekend. He's he and you know who he's big on. You know who he's big on Kentucky Light. New Mexico. Was that before? Yeah. Well, hey, okay. welcome to the party. Where you yeah. been? Where you been? Where Richard Patino told me to see a psychologist or a psych a psychiatrist. I, I that know. wasn't just dude. He's so Mexico. funny when he talks about his own guys. Like he loves his guys. But we were talking about one particular player. He's like, yeah, but team we played sucked. Like every time, like he he we I was asking about something good. He's like, yeah, but the team we played sucked. Well, <laughs> it was just he. It's so refreshing to hear his. uh to, to talk to a coach that like doesn't take everything so seriously and just kind of understands like, Hey, we're, this is sports. It's supposed yeah. to be fun. Like we can have fun talking about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's almost like when you're at, when you're, when certain coaches are like this, in, in, at least in just in, in my travelings around the sport, when you've seen the, the worst, mm -hmm. you just sort of stop giving it a, you know what, like you just kind of like you, you become very comfortable in your own skin. And so for Richard, when things go to total crap in Minnesota, it's almost like when you've seen the bottom fall out there, you when you get your next opportunity, you've learned from it, you've learned from it, but you learn like you're not going to try to be somebody you're not. But going back to North Carolina, okay, I trust them more than Purdue to make the Final Four. I really do. And I say that because, like, I just look at their last game. They ran Wake Forest off the floor. And Baycott was basically a non-factor. He was a non-factor in the game. Offensively, defensively, he was great. But offensively, he made two shots the entire night. Had four fouls. And it wasn't even remotely close. They cleaned up in the transfer portal. Uh, and, and Hubert deserves an immense amount of credit for that. So I, I'm, I'm impressed. And here's why I trust him more, Rob. Because R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott have shown me they could do it before. And I think the pieces fit really well with this team. Harrison Ingram fits in quite well. Elliot Cadeau has continued to get better and better. Cormac Ryan, he's been complimented by his teammates. You knew this team was going to be good when in the preseason, Baycott was making it a point to talk about the new guys on the team. They're meshing. Mm -hmm. They're meshing. Mm -hmm. And there's leadership there. They, they're, uh, it feels like they have all kind of realized uh, Goodman makes this point all this time, and I'm, I'm loath to to say good things about Jeff, but there's a bunch of guys on that team that have been losers previously, right? I'm doing air. You can't speak. Losers previously, right? That have not won, and I think that they kind of all came together and were like, "Look, you know what? We have one more shot at this. I don't care about my stats. Armando Baycott doesn't care about being an All American. He wants to have a chance to win. Like he wants to leave a legacy. So." Um, when you have guys that are bought in like that, it all makes a lot of sense. Hey guys, you probably know by now we've partnered with bet MGM this season. We'll be using bet MGM lines to make all of our picks and we'll have special offers for the listeners and viewers of the field of 68 each and every week of the college basketball season. We have a special offer that will be available, uh, right now running through Monday, February 12th, the morning after Super Bowl. 58. Uh, if you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, in honor of the big game, you can use the bonus code FIELD158 and you will get $158 in free bets on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not you win your first bet. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $5 of your hard-earned money. 
Here's how you make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using the bonus code FIELD158. Deposit at least 5 bucks and place your first wager on any game. And three, you will receive $158 in bonus bets regardless of whether or not you win that bet. Just make sure you use the code FIELD158 when you sign up. And remember, BetMGM is now available under one wallet in select states. Uh, this allows you to be able to use the same account um, regardless of what state you're in. That's really easy for me because I live in New Jersey and I cover games in New York and Philly and I like to bet when I'm at those games. Uh, so it's very convenient to be able to do that. So download the BetMGM app today, sign up and use that promo code FIELD158. Gentlemen, burning question number five. And again, I'm going to go to my ACC uh, correspondent, Terrence Oglesby. With Mark Mitchell and Jeremy Roach back in the fold, and with Tyrese Proctor seeming like he's kind of figured some things out, are we at a point where people kind of forgot about this Duke team and just how good and talented they are? What do you think? No. Their problems are their problems. Their problems are going to be what they are. Like, it's going to be rim protection. There's no way to just magically, for Mark Williams, to magically disappear. Uh, and their last win, while they did play fine, it was against Louisville. I'm not counting a win against Louisville. Just not going to do it. Um, Pitt at home. They have Blake Henson. I can understand I why they put my coffee on my microphone. You know, thanks for that. What's that? <laughs> I'm not going to count a win against Louisville. I'm not counting a win against Louisville at this point. It's, rid it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they they reeled off a bunch of wins in a row. They beat Baylor on a neutral. Um, they haven't really played a big – like this game against Clemson, while Clemson hasn't been playing well as of late, it's a big one in terms of kind of maybe not a litmus test, but, but close. Uh, it's you know they get it at home. It's a I think it's going to be a quad one opportunity because Clemson's still in the top forty of the net. Like I think that's a that's a big that's a that's a big one. It there just hasn't been that much competition and there's no rim protection there, guys. There's just not. Phantom. I I just I think they're a good team that can make the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. They're in that mix. How many teams are there in the country that can do that? A bunch. A bunch. And they're one of them, but but I I just I just don't trust them. I don't trust them to to be at that level, to be in tier A. They haven't shown me enough. They really haven't. When have you come away? from a Duke game this season and said, man, they really impressed me tonight. That's, I mean, honestly, that's kind of where I'm at with it too. Like, I, I think that the, the ceiling is there. I love their guards. I love Jeremy Roach. I think that he's so underrated. Jerry McCain's been a shot maker. Caleb Foster's been a shot maker. Um, they don't really have that big wing that you look for. And then you're hundred percent right. T.O. It's just, there's no, they're missing that Derek Lively, that Mark Williams, that guy at the at, at the bucket that can take everything away. And they don't really have the – like, Flip is a great offensive five if you want to kind of uh, play small ball and, and skill ball and space it out. But he's just not switchable enough, and he's not the rim protector, and he's just not the defensive presence. So Got a lot of Matthew Hurt in him. Uh, I mean, I think he's a little bit better than Matthew Hurt. Um but uh, defensively, yeah. defensively, yeah, your point, your point is, your point is well taken. I, they I, do I, have spurtability, like they do have. I mean, between Jeremy Roach and Jared McCain, uh, and you see Proctor, albeit against Louisville, come in off the bench and hit nine field goals and go for a ten from three. Like they have spurtability. It doesn't feel like it to me. They're they're they become this team of like whoever's night it is. And I'm kind of waiting for I just I'm waiting for the, the the plug to fully connect. Like I feel like the Christmas lights are on the house, but not all of them are working at the same time. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, that no, it does. does. And and the one thing I would say, time. yeah, the one thing I would say too, guys, is that Jeremy Roach has kind of been banged up in and out of the lineup. Mark Mitchell's been banged up in and out of the lineup. Um Tyrese Proctor's been banged up in and out of the lineup. And Jeremy Roach's thing now, like. Yeah, yeah and, and then, like, Tyrese Proctor just hasn't been as good as we necessarily expected. So, like, I do think there's still some ceiling there, but it's a little bit like, um, uh, I mean, they can get better offensively, but that's not where their issues are. You know, their issues kind of are what they are. There's a reason why they went so hard after Ernest Duda in the, uh, in the transfer portal this year. And the last thing I'll say is 
Um, as we see these Kentucky freshmen continue to like play phenomenally, 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 you got it. Phenomenally, phenomenally. It's hard that I, I need more coffee. I'm, I'm struggling this morning. I, I feel the way that T.O. looks at this point. Um, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, wait a minute. You got Duke's got Clemson tomorrow. They're at Virginia Tech on Big Monday, and then they're at North Carolina. What's their record in the next three games? Uh, two and one. Two and one. One, one and two. Two and one. Um, you think one and two? You yeah. think who do you think? Do you think they go to Virginia Tech and lose, or they beat Clemson at home? I don't know, but they're going to mm-hmm. lose one of them. I think they're yeah. two and one. Enter um, Sandman last on Monday night. Yeah. Um. The just to to finish the point I was going to make is that I think that. Uh, seeing the kind of up and down nature of the young guys on this Duke roster should reinforce how impressive it's been for the Kentucky freshmen to look like they aren't freshmen. Um, that's the last thing I'll say on that. All right. Uh, I asked you guys to, to come up with something like this and, and to think it through. Um, who is the one player in college basketball this year that has a real chance to go full Kemba Walker, put a team on his back and carry them to a national championship fanta will go to you first on this one it's rj davis it's rj davis i mean i know it's the easy choice but guys he's just he's wired for this he's wired to 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 average 27 points per game in the ncaa tournament and lead north carolina to a national championship let's not make this more complicated than it needs to be it's rj davis i got another one i'll let you go first though to I think LJ Cryer at Houston could get it done. We talked about like how many guys are there uh, and how many you need to play really well. You want to talk a one man band? Somebody can go off by himself and hold the other team to thirty eight points. LJ LJ Cryer on top of Houston's defense. That's a that's a guy who could do it. So mine is uh, and and I I hope you guys agree with me is Dalton Connect. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think that, yeah, I think he is the the one guy. Like, look, LJ, if Houston's going to win. The national title, LJ Cryer has got to be like look like a top ten guard in the sport, right? Um, maybe top reason, five. Yeah, maybe top five. Like the reason why North Carolina is back in this conversation as a national title contender and a Final Four contender is because RJ Davis looks like the best point guard in college basketball. Um, but Dalton Connect is the one guy that we've seen go literally go for thirty six points in back to back games and have a four game stretch where he averaged twenty eight points. Um, in uh, for for the Vols, we I think RJ Davis is the best small guard in college basketball. The best mm-hmm. small guard in college basketball. He's not a point guard. He's the best small guard in college basketball. Okay, I'm sorry. Semantics. I'm sorry that I'm sorry semantics that I, matter. Semantics. I'm sorry, matter. I'm sorry that I upset you, To can you forgive me? Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm rooting, I'm rooting for Isaiah Stevens to go Kemba in the tournament. Oh man, mm-hmm. that's, that's what, look. You can do it, man. Like I, I yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah, you know, we talked about this on the Mountain West Insider. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I want you to explain why you are so impressed with him because I loved your breakdown of him when we talked about him earlier. I can't remember what I said for what it's worth, but uh, <laughs> secondly, uh, no, he's a, he's a guy that's <laughs> supremely quick. He goes from standing still to full speed as well as anybody in college basketball. Elite quickness, elite quickness. He can get downhill and he puts passes on a dime, and he like. Some of these vision passes that he's making, like he's making them around the hedge guy to the opposite corner, around the guy's back. Like some of these passes are just absurd. Now, go ahead, Fanta. His teammates don't even see him coming. That's right. And like they have to like they have to gather it, bounce it around their hands, and then finish. And they still have a second to to finish it. Now, Nevada beat him up. That's what happened. In Reno the other day, Nevada just beat him up. They slowed him down, and, and they had a hard time generating any offense because Nevada was big and switchable and all that. But he still got wherever he wanted. He had a hard night from the field, but like putting the passes on a dime, ends up with 11 assists. He, he struggled shooting it, but, man, I mean, he can create whenever he wants, and his change of direction is elite. Elite. America, people watching this, I, 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 I've not been on the Mountain West Insider, and I don't know, you know, but I'm going to share this as a college hoops fan. That league right now is as fun to watch as any in the country. Yes. The games, the entertainment value of the games is terrific. You know what I love about it, Fanna? Like, we'll we'll do an episode of After Dark, right? And it'll end at 1230. 
and I'm I'm wired, I'm juiced, I'm excited, and I I, I just I want to sit down and I need to like just kind of settle, right? You need to come back down from from the high of sitting here and, and talking to you guys. And the best part about it is that every Tuesday and Wednesday night, when I do that, I can just sit here and I can watch two Mountain West games. The, yeah. the, the last 10 to 15 minutes of two Mountain West games. And it's awesome because there's always something insane happening in one of those endings, whether it's like a five point play with three seconds left, or if it's a comeback, or if, you know, UNLV is getting blitzed by 35 at home by the worst. Like there's always something insane happening in that conference. No, really good players. Big fan. Mountain of West Listen, after dark. Ma- Mountain, Mountain West. West after that's what we might have to start doing. Mountain West after dark. That's what they should start calling it because the Pac 12 is dead. So we got the Mountain West yeah. after dark. And it's right. me out there for these 11.30 yeah. start times. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so a lot hey, of look. times I've been tossing it to you. Like You have been. You have been. We've been on. That's, that, on hey, guys, honestly, that's one of my favorite things is to, like, sit there and it's like, all right, we head out. We got uh, – uh, I'm John Fanta signing off. We're going to go hear from Terrence Oglesby, and I forget who your partner was, but he was really good the other night. Too. Like, that's one of my favorite things. It's like, one of my guys to another one of my guys. Let's fucking go. The, most <laughs> go. the DTF takeover, baby. We appreciate that. That is the most stressful, like, 12 seconds, as T.O. knows. When they're counting you, you can't miss the count. No. <laughs> like, if, if you're off on that toss, you are hearing from, from your people. What the hell? It's yep. not It's not like Field of 68 After Dark, where if we just want to keep going, when Trevor's counting in here, and we just keep going, he'll just be like, all right, I guess we're going to keep going. They 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 cut you off, man. Yeah, you know, hard, hard right. cut off. Hey, um, we got a question from Bruce Wayne. And this is so perfect for what's coming on your rundown. He said, hey, guys, what's the Dream March Madness matchup? Stay tuned, Bruce. Oh, that's a great tease. Listen, um, I, before we do that, I, I want to know, do you guys agree with me or disagree? There is nothing better in sports than when you get to the heart of the college basketball season, right? No, the, nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> nothing this better. You're so much fun. That's why I need to tell you guys about our partners over at Rhythm. If you're into sports betting, you need Rhythm, just like T.O. needs Rhythm when he's on the dance floor. The place for she data, it. back, pop, and pitch. Actually, look, I take that she back. It. I take that she back. It. I take that back. You're right. I'm sorry. T.O. T.O.'s got moves. I saw T.O. <laughs> lit up the dance floor at the Phantom wedding. It was, it was, I was, I was very impressed for, for a middle-aged, bald, white guy like T.O., T.O. held his own. I was very. Hey, we, we, hey, we tore that dance floor a new asshole. That's what we did. <laughs> we did. We did. But for those that are, are that are unfamiliar, Rhythm, spelled R-I-T-H-M-M, it is the go-to mobile app for player props and game picks. Backed by AI predictive models, Rhythm helps you make smarter and faster betting decisions across all sports, but particularly college basketball, where there are as many as 150 games a day during conference play weekends, many of which have soft, softer lines at BetMGM than you'll find in the NFL or the NBA or some of the professional leagues. So with Rhythm, you get data-backed picks for every single Division One game and every single spread and every single total and every single money line, uh, money line line, I guess, um, every single day. So users get free picks daily with the ability to upgrade to unlimited access. And for those of you already using modeling, you can build your own custom sports betting models within the app itself. So if you want to increase your edge and win more bets, Go to the link in the description and download Rhythm today. That's R-I-T-H-M-M, the place for data-backed props and picks. That means that we are now at two of the ad reads with our sponsors that had some kind of ridiculousness in it. I apologize to Rhythm. We're, I'm doing my best here, man. I'm doing my best. This is the, <laughs> the danger of live podcasting. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, anyway, yes, T.O. tore the dance floor, a new asshole, at the Phantom Wedding, 100% that that did happen i can back you up on that i can verify that, that and he wasn't like doing like the lawnmower or anything like that like he just he was you kept it you know what it was it was uh you guys ever seen hitch yeah yeah you know that scene when will smith is teaching kevin james how to dance yes. he's like you just gotta you gotta keep where you're at right you gotta keep where teal keeps it where is that he knows his strength you were great, you know, you were great. It's a little there's a little kys there when Tio's on the dance floor you know what kys you is you know your scout Know your own scouting report. Know your strengths and weaknesses. T.O. knows the strengths and weaknesses. That's right. That's right. I saw some things on that on that wedding dance floor that I will never unsee. Can we tell the can we can we tell the people what happened, T.O.? Can we tell that story, Finn? Are you okay if we tell this story? On the fall. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. As long as you don't do the the one person there that was wearing a wig. 
No, 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 we're not. We we won't. We won't. I've already I've I've been sworn to secrecy on that one. I've been sworn yeah. to secrecy on that one. Um, so you know, Tio, you tell the story. You tell it better than I do. Uh, oh, Fanta. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like we, my my man Fanta was just getting busy, and all of a sudden, my man went from a hundred miles an hour to flat as fast as I've ever seen. Like I, I don't think I've ever seen somebody hit the floor as fast as you, Fanta. Like you went from a up, from an upright position to down, and we reached. Rob and I reached down and picked you up so fast, didn't miss a beat. Now, mm -hmm. what I'll say is, some of these uh, marble dance or what, these granite dance floors can get slippery. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like one of these things where like well, Fanta stumbling. It was slippery. Like if yeah. somebody's no, down there sweating, it, it was, no, it was the feet went out. Like that's what it was. The foot went out and it was phew, boom. Like yeah, that. it was gone. Yeah. But the best part, the best part about it was we had you back up on your feet and dancing before your wife even realized that you were on your back. <laughs> I think we might we might have been the only ones that noticed it, T.O. Yeah, yeah we, got, we, got, we got you up quick. Yes. We yes. just moved. We moved right on. Yeah. All right. Um uh burning question number seven before we get into the thing that you just teased right there johnny furphy if he is making shots like this i think he's averaging 17 points and shooting 53 percent from three over the course of his last three games if he's going to be this dude if he is going to be the new svi Mikheluk, is he going to be uh, does this change to what you think the ceiling for kansas can be this year i think it makes him bigger it makes him more switchable that that he had 11 boards the other day. That entire roster needs to rebound better. I think they got rebound out rebounded the other day. Who'd they play? Because now I'm having a brain fart because it's 10 in the morning and I traveled all yesterday. Who'd they play the other day? They played, uh, uh, Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah Cincinnati yeah. toughed them out and they still found a way to beat them pretty, not going to say easily, but pretty handily. Uh, look, if he's able to space the floor, they've needed that. And then Kevin McCullough has done a terrific job of shooting the basketball too. Like this team – they just needed more depth. You needed Furphy to kind of take that next step. He's since done that. And I like moving him from the bench to the starting lineup because some guys play better that way. And the things that El Marco Jackson has provided this season, uh, he can provide those exact same things off the bench. The, sometimes a shooter you have to be a little bit more delicate with and maybe start him, let him find his rhythm. Some guys are wired to come off the bench. Some guys aren't. And when Furphy entered the lineup, he started to play a lot better. I thought he was terrific. He's shooting 42% from three right now. If he's able to continue doing that with McCullough shooting 38, uh, Hunter hasn't taken that many, but he's above 40. They needed that extra body to knock, knock down shots because Nick Timberlake hasn't been it. He's shooting 30 and 30%. And we thought he was going to be a knockdown guy. He just hasn't been. They've needed that extra four spacer. Yeah, and it's not just the shots that he's making. It's when he's out there. Like, I think part of the reason why McCuller is shooting the percentage that he's shooting is defenses don't feel like the need to run him off the three-point line. Same thing with DeWan Harris. They're like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have the extra bodies in the paint to deal with Hunter Dickinson and K.J. Adams. And if that means we give up open threes to Kevin McCuller and, and DeWan Harris, we live with that, right? You can't do that with Furphy. Like, you got to run him off the line. And I think that that just – his threat – creates more space regardless of the actual percentages that people does that make sense what i'm trying to say like am i yeah. making that point clear okay yeah they'll um, close out short on mccullough knowing like hey mm -hmm. if we just get out there and contest we'll give ourselves a shot yep fanna what do you make of kansas what do you make of furphy well that that it, it does change who they are it changes what they can do who they can be because all season we've said the same thing that <laughs> This team's perimeter shooting is a, was a barren desert. But what they only have three losses total on the season. Like, guys, that's – we we criticize Kansas. You know why? We think of them as a national champion. So mm -hmm. any little thing we're going to nitpick, but they're still damn great. They're still in mm -hmm. Tier A. They belong in Tier A. I would trust them more than Houston because they've done it. they got a coach who's done it. Yeah, I, really? Hunter Dickinson's an All-American. I mean, I, it's it's so it's such a tough question to ask because on the one hand, like I think Houston has definitively been more impressive this season. They're better defensively. They have better offensive numbers. Um, they are better across every single metric, right? And then you look at Kansas, and I would say, like, if you were if we were to pick teams and play pickup, right? I think the first at least the first two, maybe the first three picks come off 
Kansas? Is that is that great? You probably take it 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 and Emma Caller first, right? And then maybe even yeah, kind of get to it. I don't I disagree with that though. I disagree with you on Houston's been more impressive than Kansas. Kansas beat Tennessee. They've beaten UConn. Who's Houston beaten? They've beaten Texas Tech, Fair. BYU. Fair. You know, you got to – Houston, you got to – Houston, uh, T.O., I agree they should beat Texas. Although it, yeah. that's going to be – On the other hand, the, the counter that that's I would make is that Houston money. has – Houston has two one-possession road losses to top 25-ish, tournament-ish kind of teams where Kansas lost at West Virginia and they lost at UCF and, and they kind of got smacked around off. a little bit by a Marquette team that is like, eh, I don't know if they're really all that good, so – I am I am sad that we will be in – well, I'm, I'm, this is the only part about being in Providence that I'm sad about. If I could be anywhere else in the country tomorrow, it would Games. be Ames, Iowa. Mm-hmm. That place is – Iowa State's feeding them tomorrow. That place – just held magic. Held magic, held magic. By the way, he our man Tang was Iowa. pissed. It's your own – yeah, yep. Tang. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was pissed. Why? Why was he pissed? I've I don't know. Two different, I've two like different. A, if you if you get there's a camera angle where if you look from behind Tang and you can see the front row, like you see a bunch of like the the bunch of the gray hairs, a bunch of like 75 and 80 uh, 80 year olds like sitting there like screaming at him, pointing at him. I think there were a couple birds being flipped. That's how you know it's a good home court environment when you have the gray hairs that are sitting there screaming at the opposing coach. So yeah, yeah real mature. I think it was more. I think they were throwing stuff from the fan. From the fans oh, were throwing you can't stuff, do that. You and then can't. Tang took what tried to go talk to Otzelberger, and Otz was like, he, "He's he's out of his box. He's out of his box. He's trying to get him teed up." As opposed to like Tang thinking, like, "Hey, like I'm trying to keep my team safe here or whatever." And that I think because Tang doesn't get that angry that often. I mean, I, I'm not a player for him, but like like that kind of demonstrative in front of another coach that combative i haven't seen that from him yeah pet peeve pet peeve officials love you but have good friends who are officials if you're going to call technical foul in a game for a coach being out of his box and then the same thing happens when it's a four-point game with seven minutes to go you got to call that too yes mm-hmm. yes shout out I mean, to the providence seton hall game yeah i mean and uh I love Sheen Holloway, but he was set the pirate logo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, Matt I mean, has been on Matt. Matt Norland has been about on about this all season long, but like, we got to do something about these coaches that are. Yeah, you got to do something. It's, play, it's a little like, bit ridiculous. It's like, it's a Shaka, like guys. I love you. I, I, I love you, Shaka, but like, get on the yeah. sideline, man. Like yep. Arch, Rob. I love you. Get on the get on See, the sidelines. Get off the court. That's a UConn fan. Man. Man. You're huh? a UConn fan, and this is the this was the spring off of what'll be a topic next week. This this is how the Hurley Patino thing started because Hurley told the refs keep that man in his box. Ricky didn't like that. <laughs> no one look, no one tells Rick Patino to stay in his box, right? <laughs> no, no one you tells. Rick by the way, by the way, they're getting they are getting better. They're they are they're in for a surge. They're they're good. They're good. I mean, they lost three in a row, and then they smacked the Villanova team that just had no idea what to do against that. Yeah, all. I, they, look, I, I, I'm with. I think they're tournament good. I don't think that they are. They are like compete in the top three in the Big East. Good. I, I just, I, yeah, I think that they're to me they're. It's them. And it to me it's UConn. Then it's I, I probably would still go Creighton and Marquette. And then St. John's Creighton. and Seton Hall. Creighton's right. won six of their last seven games. Credit to Creighton. They've they've won six of seven. Hey man, look, they they've embraced this idea of we are going to win games in the muck, right? Like we're gonna win games in the 60s. And it doesn't look like they got a bunch of tough dudes on that roster, but you know, the, the yeah. shot that Stephen Ashworth hit at Seton Hall, I want to say was it to force the second overtime. Like he crossed two people over. He's got a Daiwusu just climbed all over him and he comes over and he like makes this floater over Jaden Bediaco that's off the glass and goes in. I'm just like, holy shit. Right I didn't know he had that in his bag. All right. Last thing, and then we can get out of here so Tio can go take a nap. What is your dream matchup 
in the national title game. If you could just the the most the best storylines, the most entertaining, the 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 best kind of um, viewing experience for a fan, the the best storylines. What like what Tia? We'll go to you first, then you fan, and then I'll close it out. What what is the dream matchup that you could have in a national title game this season in Phoenix, Arizona, North Carolina? Why? Caleb Love, R.J. Davis, the breakup there, the size there, the physicality of the game, the guards, the play, the big men, Balo versus uh, Baycott. Like this up huh. and down. Yeah, it'd be flying. It'd be a great game. That would that would be a fantastic game. Plus all the storylines with the guards and everything too. Great environment too, because that would be basically an Arizona home game. Yeah, it would be. It'd be an Arizona home game in the last year of the Pac-12. Be a fun game. Yep, Fana. Connecticut versus Purdue. Yeah, I'm not mad at that either. I, I just, I, I, I would, I, as a basketball lover, I want to see Zach Eady and Donovan Klingon stand face to face on the basketball court. And if I can't have either of them, if like if so, let's just say you said back to me, you, you take one of them out. There's not even a question of who I would want to play UConn or Purdue if I can't have them meet each other. And that's Calipari. I want Kentucky. If if UConn plays Kentucky, the Hurley Calipari media tour before the game, oh, 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 it would just be, it'd be terrific. It'd be so terrific. But yeah, I mean, Edie's in there for me because I just, Zach Edie in a national championship game, fellas, would be superb theater to see if the redemption tour could be completed. Yeah, Matt Paulson just said it. He goes, I could watch six rounds of UConn versus Purdue for the whole tournament. Yes. Sign me best up for seven. Seven, seven. Yeah, best of seven series. Yeah, it's the it's the narratives for me, right? You have um, Purdue coming off of losing to a 16 with a chance to win a national championship, and you have Dan Hurley coming off of a national championship with a chance to win another national championship. Um, you have the two best teams in college basketball who both – play pretty appealing styles of basketball that match up well with the way that each other wants to play, right? In terms of trying to pick out the different, you have big guards that want to get out and kind of pressure you a little bit on UConn. You have guards that uh, are really good going up against drop coverage and Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer. You have Donovan Klingon, who's one of the best drop coverage big men in college basketball, trying to figure all that out. You have Klingon trying to figure out what the hell to do with Zach Eady. Um, just all the storylines, all the narratives there. I think it'd be a very interesting brand of basketball. But if I had to pick one, um, and UConn, for the record, UConn Purdue would have been my pick. So thanks for stealing that from me, Fanta. Uh, I'm going to go with a rematch of Kentucky and North Carolina because I think that they are just loaded with guards. You have two teams that want to play like this. You have, I would say, probably what? Th the three most entertaining shot makers in college basketball between Robert Dillingham, Reed Shepard, and R.J. Davis, and just going out there and letting them cook, right? I kind of love games where you just have a bunch of guards that are just out there trying to cook and playing up and down and playing with pace. So um, I would not complain about any of those three. You know who? what all three of those matchups would be great for? The brand, baby. That'd be great for Field of 68. <laughs> yeah, it would be baby. anything like that. As long as we don't get – hey, look, as long as we don't get uh, – get a, a national title game that's something like St. Mary's going up um, against Utah, I think I'll be pretty happy with the way that that plays out. <laughs> Which could happen because that's, that's what happened. It could happen, year. man. And, and this year in the NCAA tournament, would you be surprised to see a, a nine seed playing the 12 seed for the national championship? No, of course not. <laughs> of course not. Uh, uh, Michigan State takes on – New Mexico for all the marbles next. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Listen, guys, this has been fun. Uh, we might start doing this live podcasting a little bit more now that they got it figured out now that the streamline. Maybe uh if we get if we get a hundred likes on this video, how about that? If we get a hundred likes on this video for people that are still listening, we will do these live podcasts more. Um and uh and, and yeah, so One for more thing. go ahead. Shout out to the Campbell Camels. Yes, and Anthony Delorso. Good Anthony Delorso. If you don't know this kid's name, he has scored at least 26 points in three of the last four games. Kevin McGee doing a nice job. They're four and three in the CAA. They were picked third to last in that preseason poll. I love checking out unique college hoops venues. Gore Arena was beautiful, old school in every way. Classic hoops house. 
and they have a 2,800 pound bronze camel in the front of their gym. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to get on top of the thing. Who would have been in a fight? A fighting camel or leaky black? Um, a camel. A camel. Okay, that's a that's a that's an Iron Call basketball podcast reference for people that didn't get it. So, uh, listen, shout out to John Fanta, shout out to Terrence Oglesby. No credit given to uh, Matt Norlander that uh, that show Iron College Basketball. All the success belongs to uh, their producer Nata Edwards. Uh, no, nothing to do with the talent on that show. So, listen, guys, <laughs> it's been fun. It's always a pleasure. We will see you again later. Uh, Rhode Island on Saturday. It's still oh, yeah. It's Friday. I'm trying to remember what day it is, man. It's uh, we will see you tomorrow. Uh, pre-game about 10 a.m. up in Providence, up in Friartown, uh, hopefully with a couple Friartown IPAs. So uh, for Terrence Oglesby, for John Fanta, my name is Rob. 10 a.m. IPAs? Yeah, next week. Why not? No, not drank by us. <laughs> not not oh, by maybe. you. Oh, not, not by, by me. Maybe yeah. by Robert. All right. We'll, 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 be, we'll be shotgunning uh, Friartowns and ripping shots of Jameson. Make sure that we're, we're on the same level. As uh, as the student section. Listen, fellas, always a